Ladies, gentlemen, and a reason of all ages, there's of course quite a lot of conversation on Dragon's Dogma 2 right now as an extremely popular game that is also particularly polarizing. And one topic that I've seen come up quite a bit as of late is just how many enemy types there are in the game. So today, I'm not going to share my opinions or make any conclusions for you or anything like that. We're just going to literally show and talk about every enemy type that is in the game. These are goblins. They travel in packs. They have various kinds of weapon combination possibilities, including one that has a shield, trapped to their chest and just jumps at you. He is my favorite. As you move further through the world, you will instead find hobgoblins. Usually these can also function as sort of leaders to larger groups of regular goblins. They are larger and often wear armor as well. In the more deeply forested areas, you can also find choppers, which are another goblinoid enemy that is more specialized towards hit and run gorilla type tactics. These ones are smaller, generally faster, easier to flinch, but they are also relentless. These are the ones that will just literally kick you repeatedly when they knock you down. The final goblinoid type then is Knackers. These are generally more located around Batal and the volcanic island. They are the longer, thinner goblinoids with long weapons. They are faster than most goblinoids, but also tankier than choppers. And they tend to have leaders in each pack that are bigger than a hobgoblin and have much heavier armor as well. Then moving on to our canine foes, the varieties of wolf type enemies, the first one of course being wolves themselves. These also travel in packs, and if you aren't careful, they will knock you down, grab you by your neck, and drag you in the opposite direction of your waypoint like just right over to a cliff like someone at Capcom is controlling them manually just to make life harder for you. There's also red wolves. These are a variant wolf, mostly common in Batal and the hotter parts of the map as a whole. They are sleeker, shorter haired to deal with the heat, and they are faster due to these differences too. Then we have a fun one, which is wargs, and these are also garms. They are essentially the same thing. They have different names. They have slightly different color palette swaps. They're big beefy canines that don't travel in packs at all, essentially just singular beast enemies that are just a small step below counting as a boss. Then we have bandits. These are roving packs of humans wielding a variety of different weapon combinations, essentially reflecting player weapon options in various ways, with there also being a specifically thief type that can steal your items and then try to escape with them. Then let's talk lizards. There are your basic saurians, weak underbelly and tail, bounce off of the top of them, dangerously using spears and such like that. There are asps, which are the poison versions of saurians. They've got purple bubbling boils on their back and they apply toxins to you with their attacks. They are slightly less resistant from the top, but still function similarly other than that. There are Rattlers. These are the rock version of Saurians, much thicker hide, nearly impervious from the top, best dealt with by flipping them over and attacking the underbelly or throwing them off of heights. Then there are also the Magma Scale Saurians, which is the fire variant that you're most likely to find in caves around the volcanic island. The final Saurian type then are called Serpents, and these are quite rare. They are the lightning type Saurians. These are most often found in specific caves, often in higher elevations, as well as guarding something that usually is pretty important. They function as well, mostly like the poison ones, but with lightning instead. As well, there are all of the different harpy type enemies in the game, the base ones being harpies themselves, of course, basic flying enemies, interesting shape where the part that would be the arms of the human torso are also where the legs would be on a bird body, so they sort of are both very creepy the more that you think about that, really, and the fun trick that you can actually have here is you can grab onto their feet and have them carry you up places against their will. There are also venom harpies, these tend to be located around the deserts of Batal and apply a deadly poison. Here's the succubus as well, these have much more colorful wings and do ice damage. They tend to be in more mountainous type biomes. Then there's also gore harpies, which have thick feathery manes around their faces, and they're just the big beefy standard physical version of a harpy. After that, we have the slime type enemies. These enemies are completely invulnerable to physical damage, only hurt by elemental effects. They will swallow you up if they get close to you, and they can completely destroy a party in moments if they come from an unexpected spot and essentially grapple all of you. There's also ooze, which are the oily version of slimes. These will cover you in oil and make you weak to fire, but also if you do any fire damage to them, they'll essentially just explode on the spot. Then there are also sludge, which are the fiery magma slimes that you'll find on the volcanic island. Resistant to fire, among the normal resistances that these slimes will have, and a fair bit more damaging to get caught out by as well. Then we have skeletons and undead of various kinds. There's just the basic skeleton enemies, of course. They come in various configurations, including mages. They only really pop up at night, and they don't die permanently unless you break their skull after killing them the first time. But there are also things like skeleton lords, which are essentially just the skeleton knight archetype, but three times the size or so. There's also ghosts. These are the enemies that fly around at night trying to sap your stamina as a way of locking you down so they can kill you. These include the phantoms, which are the basic floating blue orbs of soul that laugh at you as they swirl around you at night, as well as phantasms, which are essentially the upgraded version of the same thing, a lighter blue, and they are electrically charged and can apply shock to you with their damage as well. The third enemy type here is specters. Avoiding endgame spoilers here, so I won't properly show this, but they are essentially just purple versions of these ghost enemies that are locked to the endgame section, so just generally pretty 
commonly around once you get to that stage and you are traveling at night. For general undead, there's also just the classic zombies that you can find slow walking in certain areas, especially in the tome type areas in Batal, and there are the stout undead as well, which are the chunkier zombies that explode. Then we have three undead boss enemy types. Whites are floating undead sorcerers, essentially, commanding lesser skeletons and firing off spells while flying from above. Liches are effectively the same exact thing mechanically, but they are more visually fleshy than whites, and the lore of this being that liches are people who chose to become undead for the power, whereas whites were brought into their situation against their will. Then there's also the Dullahan, a new enemy for Dragon's Dogma 2. These creepy guys walk around holding their own heads and use them to essentially just suck the soul right out of your pawns and instantly dismiss them, in a similar way to how Medusa's petrification works in this game. These enemies are very rare, they only spawn at night, and a very interesting fight if you've not found it for yourself. Past that, we are down to purely bosses or rare enemy types really, of which we of course have the Cyclops. There's no fancy Cyclops in the game, though there are versions of them with armor. And of course, these are just large, unintelligent creatures with big, smacky clubs, obvious weak spot of the singular eye that they have. They are just a great early boss. And then there are also Ogres, which are the hairy and agile demonic guys. These will actively jump on walls and hang there to set up more sneaky attacks. They are very agile for sure, for their size, jumping around often, and they are easily enraged too. They also love picking up uh, women, like they will actually pick up your female party members and grab them and on occasion, like, use their face to, I don't even want to describe what they do, but it's pretty weird. There's also Grim Ogres, mostly these are in Batal in the volcanic island areas, and mostly these just function as more powerful ogres. Not much of a moveset swap up other than enhanced aggression. There's also Minotaurs, one of my personal favorites, big hairy bulls that stand on two legs, wielding large axes for cutting enemies in twain. They will charge at you, throw you around, and punish you when you're down. They are especially weak to knock down while charging though, which is a pretty fun counter. There's also Gore Minotaurs, which again are functionally exactly Exactly the same. They look much gnarlier, knotted hair, bits of growths growing on them, more intense eyes, but moveset quite the same. Another boss type is golems. There are different colors of golems, different types of them, purple ones, blue ones, things like that, but they mostly function the same and give similar rewards. They're held together by raw magical energy connected by pieces of magically charged metal. Magnetizing stone to their bodies is just a really cool way of realizing a golem concept in a very unique fight as well. There are chimeras as well, which are of course the classic trio combination of a lion, a goat, and a snake in one body, the snake shoots out venom and guards the rear, the goat casts spells from on top, but is the weakest to incoming attacks, and the lion mostly controls the actual movement, as well as existing as protection for the goat section in the middle. There's also gore chimeras, which are the same thing, with a purple glow, darker fur on the lion, different shade of goat, and these are again mostly similar, though I think the goat does have a couple of different spells he can pull out in this version. Then we have our dragonoid enemies as well, which are drakes. You see these all over the map, these are the dragons that are of course far lesser than our dragon, thus the term drake more menacing than most other open world enemies in general, but a mere shadow of the dragon's power itself. These have incredibly weak hearts, that is their weak spot, and theoretically fighting dragonoid enemies like these is what gives Dragon's Plague to pawns in the first place, who will then pass it on to other pawns while out in the rift. Then there is also the lesser dragon enemy. This is the one covered in pustules that shows up at the Dragon's Breath Tower, and also in Melv earlier in the story. It's a bigger fight, different weaknesses than a drake, sort of like an anti-dragon almost, an inversion of the typical expectations of that type of fight. Then we of course have the dragon, Grigoire, and I don't think it's a spoiler to say that he exists given the whole concept of the whole game, and then without spoiling anything as the actual proper endgame isn't even a first playthrough thing for a lot of players, there are two further types of bosses exclusive to the endgame within this category that are impossible to miss. Then finally we just have the last three much more unique major enemies being the Sphinx, whose fight is based more around riddles than anything else, at least until the latter moments, cunning to the last but easily taken down with enough patience. The Medusa, which is in a nice little cave off in the south west, a gorgon through and through, though a good 90% of her is snake, the way it should be, with only a small section of her actually being like a humanoid shape, and it's a really good fight, honestly, very snake-like, and that's exactly what I want from it. And then the last one is, of course, the Talos. This is all over the marketing of the game, so I don't feel bad calling this one out, regardless of how late it actually is. Massive stone enemy with essentially bits of wake stone stuck into it to bring it back to life. These are the reason that it exists in this moment, but are also its potential downfall. And that's it then, everyone. The full list of every enemy type in the game, by my count, just a bit under 50 different enemy types across the map and in, even into the end game. Hopefully this has helped you out in some way, this knowledge, and of course if you've noticed any that I might have missed here, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, but I tried to be as complete as I possibly could. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>